So yeah, the next session is uh, Give More 24 Success Snapshots. And this is a session presented by nonprofits for the benefit of all the nonprofits in the room. It's just to kind of uh, get your, your mind thinking about um, what you can do to make Give More 24 successful for your organization. And, um, you know, I've, I basically jumped on the phone with all nine of the nonprofits who are going to be up here. Uh, we talked about, you know, lessons learned, what works, what maybe doesn't work or didn't work for their organizations, uh, where you want to direct your energies, and um, also what they're planning to do to make 2018 more successful for their organizations. Uh, so you'll hear those themes throughout each presentation. And um, the first section is... Hmm. We'll go, we'll go old school on this. Um, first section is going to be a small uh, nonprofit category. And so presenting in this section is the Waluska Foundation, the North County Community Food Bank, and then Dogpaw Off Leash Parks. Um, and you also, we, I made an effort to kind of include people who had participated one year, participated multiple years. So you'll get a variety of perspectives here. Um, so to start things off, I'd like to uh, welcome Mariah Reese from the Maluska Foundation. Thank you. Thank you. So last year was our second year participating in Give More 24. Um, the first year, we really didn't know what we were doing. We just were like, oh, it's an opportunity. We'll jump on that opportunity. That first year, we made $1,000. Last year we made seven. Wow. So, and that was with matching funds. Um, for our organization, we operate on $100,000 a year. So that's 7% of our budget. So that was a pretty big deal for us. Um, we did learn a lot of things that worked and didn't work for us last year. Um, one of the big things that worked for us was planning out social media posts. So getting those graphics ready ahead of time, um, overlaying our images. We're fortunate to have volunteers that have taken a lot of great images for us of our living history programs. And so we overlaid a lot of, of the Give More 24 logos and things like that over our images and shared those on social media, primarily on Facebook, some Instagram. Um, we don't have a lot of staff. I'm the only full-time employee and the rest of the staff is part-time and volunteers. So um, we don't have an advertising department and we don't have um, so, somebody that can dedicate their time. But during downtime or you know, time when the museum hours were slow, they would work on graphics and overlaying things. We did struggle some with the graphics last year because um, not having a graphics department, we pretty much do everything in publisher. And so we struggled a little bit with um, some of the changes in the program and overlaying graphics. Um, but we were able to work through those enough um, with a lot of emails <laughs> to the Community Foundation helping us out um, to be able to have graphics. And then we kind of timed it out. We had a whole big list of post-it notes to make sure that we had our posts, you know, a few months out, or a few weeks out, so that we really reminded people about the event. Um, I think a big part of what helped us this last year was the matching funds. Um, we had a $1,000 matching grant from Vancouver Energy and then a $2,000 anonymous um, matching grant from an advised fund. And having those matching dollars really encouraged our donors. Not only our past donors, but we actually had new donors last year, which was pretty exciting for us because we've really been trying to reach the younger generation, people who don't respond to paper mail, people who don't respond to emails even, but the generation of people who they see it on their phone and they click donate because it's there and it's easy and oh yeah, I care about this. And we were excited that last year having the matching funds and being able to say, you know, your dollar is $2 on this day really encouraged people. We had set up ahead of time, we had hoped that we had certain people that said, oh yeah, I'll donate on that day and make sure you make the match. They actually forgot last year to make the match um, on that day. Like they forgot about the event. They were busy with their own lives. And so the wonderful thing for us was all these other people came out of the woodwork all over and 
saw the opportunity to help support us with those matching funds and we were able to meet all those matching funds well before the deadline. So it was super exciting um, for us. And so um, as a rural organization, we're uh, about 10 miles east of Woodland, if you know where Woodland is, um, they're by Merwin Dam. And we're in a very rural location, so the things like the day of events um, wasn't really a thing for us. It doesn't really work for us. Also, the event happens when it's not our program season. Our busiest time is the spring and the fall. Give More 24 happens a week before our events start. So we're not able to capitalize on chaperones coming with school kids or teachers or um, most of the people that come to our site. We see about 11,000 people a year, mostly kids, but we really don't see them until October. So September's not really that window. So social media really helped us reach out, but the events um, was just not a viable option for us. So we decided early on that the amount of energy it would take to get people to our site wouldn't work. So we really focused on social media. And one of the things that helped the largest for us was people sharing it on their personal page. Not just having it on our website, but you know, having our banner changed and our cover photos changed. But you know, I've changed my personal cover page on my personal account. I changed my logo. You know, they have all the art where you can say, you know, I gave or I did this. And that really helped. And so sharing it on my page, I had some people that were first-time donors, several people that were first-time donors that knew nothing about our organization, but they knew me. They knew me through Tai Chi or through Zumba or something totally unrelated. But they got home from work and they saw me share it on my page and they're like, oh, I could support that. And like, oh, you know. And so I really would encourage everyone to reach out to your own people, people that maybe know you from some other part of your life, but don't know your organization. Because those new people, not only did they give on that day, but they then came to our programs and then they came back and they donated again or they volunteered and they became engaged in our organization. So that was really exciting because it was, you know, not only to receive the donation, but to actually create a relationship with that person for our organization for the future. Um, so this year, um, we are kind of undertaking larger scale um, funding of we're going to be launching a capital campaign to purchase part of the property that we operate on. And so it's kind of a big, scary thing, but we feel like this is a huge opportunity. You see all these people post the, you know, go fund me all the time, right? Well, you know, if those of you who have done the homework, go fund me, you're taking about 7.9% out of what, you know, you are earning right from there. And so we're hoping that by communicating effectively to our donors and our support base and others, that you know, here's an opportunity to support us, you know, in a kind of a crowdfunding way of supporting something that matters um, to a lot of people, but in a way where it doesn't actually cost 7.9%, <laughs> you know, that your donations can go farther and hoping to secure some matching funds to encourage that. So that's my two cents. We're actually going to do, if anybody has any questions, uh, we're going to do those in between each one. So, any questions on what Mariah just ran over for her organization? Okay. Oh, one. Hold on. I'm just wondering if you had a strategy for finding the uh, source for the matching gifts or matching funding, or was it an obvious one that you knew right away who it would be? We did not. So that's part of our challenge this year is it just magically appeared. <laughs> and so the part of the seeing how effective it is, you know, that this year we're actively trying to go after um, securing those funds in advance, you know, and, and saying, you know, look what this did last year and hoping that we can get especially some business support to say, you know, we'll step up and help match those funds. So that was, yeah, that was all the land of the Community Foundation. This is our third time to participate in Give More 24. We did not last year, and um, so, and I'm running it this year, and I don't really know what we're doing. I mean, we're growing, we're moving forward, it's coming together. You made a couple of references of which I was interested. 
The emphasis on Give More 24 is so much on Thursday, September 20. When do we start actually, what's the best idea to start showing stuff on our web pages? Because you said, well, sometimes we did things three months out, we did three weeks out. I mean, should we be having things now on our website so that they know that the event is coming? Or, because I don't want to wait till the 20th of September. Oh no, we like, want to start now. So start now. So literally, I would do it if, if, I, if I had more than me. If I could duplicate myself, like literally, as soon as it's available in the toolkit, which a lot of it, it is. is is I would create it now so people know that it's coming okay. because we kind of did it as building. So like now you say, this is an event coming up that we're doing. So start incorporating it like into your newsletters. Like we send out newsletters for MailChimp. Well, right now, every newsletter will have something about Give More 24. Right. Maybe, you know, one newsletter will have an article, but every newsletter will have a little tag of, we're participating in this and it's coming up on this day. Right. And then on social media, um, you know, just kind of reminders. So like right now, maybe, you know, we're reminding you every couple of weeks that we're going to be doing this event. As it gets closer, you know, putting the banner on the cover photo, you know, putting the little profile picture overlay, that sort of thing. So it kind of increases in intensity. But yes, getting at people's minds now, because we've been finding, at least for us, we have very limited advertising funds and resources that it really takes about five to seven times of people to oh, see it before they actually act, before they connect the dots and they're like, oh, so if they see it, you want to make sure you're going to have five or seven contacts with a person, have it in their brain by September, you know, on that date in September. And so not everyone opens their email. So just sending the email doesn't count because, you know, like our emails, 20, 25% are open. So to reach all that population five, time, five to seven times before that date, you know, you need to be constantly reminding them, but in different ways too. Gotcha. Email, Thank, you. Thank you so much. Uh -huh. um, I wanted to add a quick comment to that. Just sorry. Um, also, you guys, the sponsors, they've already begun advertising. So if you go to Davidson Insurance, they've already sent it out on their newsletter. So one of the things that we encourage is to get your profiles up. I know you have till September 6th, but with everyone advertising, if they're starting to go to your page and it's not up yet, they don't know what you do. So just FYI, they are they are supporting you guys. They are pushing it out there. They've got it on their banners. Uh, Columbia Bank puts it up on their banners. They've already had events too. Yeah, and the toolkit also has a communications calendar this year, so you can look at that uh, for guidance on communications. Um, thank you, Mariah. And we're going to do Q and A's. The Q and A's are going to be uh, pretty brief, so we'll try to get as much in as we can. But we only have a couple minutes for Q and A between each one. Um, so next up is uh, Elizabeth Cervani with the North County Community Food Bank. Thank you, Lori. Welcome, everyone. It's great to be here again. We've been participating with Give More 24 since it first started, and each year has uh, demonstrated to us what we need to work on and where our successes lie. And for you, each of you, I think no matter what our community, I think the base point for our homework to begin is understanding who are your supporters are, where that base is. Start making those contacts early, reaching out to them and, and getting the word out about Give More 24 and participating in how they can participate what their comfort level is, can they be a matching partner or donor through that, that process, or could they support you in another way? Um, could they sponsor an event if they don't feel uh, they could provide matching dollars? I'm just asking those questions and uh, little meetings with them and gatherings, thanking them for being such strong supporters. That's kind of the successes that we found worked um, from the beginning. Those. Um, Hour by hour prizes are important too. You know, start scoping out the material that's available and figure out you know where your strategies and your strengths lie, and tackle them that way. We only have two people, as Mariah said, as as a small nonprofit, as many of you are. So it ends up being a flurry of activity for the day, but it's always positive and it brings in a lot of. of Mariah's already mentioned it, new volunteers, new donors um, for us as well. And I think that's pretty
perhaps the most enlightening piece of Give More 24 is you start making those contacts outside of your normal uh, support group and networks and donors and, and bring those individuals in and then that broadens your network connection even further. But you need to start your plan early. And I think that message has been conveyed numerous times this morning. Maybe by the time we get to the seventh time we say it, we'll all have it solidly in our heads. But make that plan out, that strategy, because that's oftentimes where you stub your toe and fall if you don't have that in, in play. Um, getting that matching donor for us has been key in the last, especially the last two years, because we were uh, blessed with a $10,000 matching donor um, who had previously been a strong uh, volunteer within the food bank, but then retired to um, actually see the world and travel with her husband. Um, but she's back, and you know, even if she can't be there uh, physically on the day, um, she's always willing to give us that dollar support. So that is our, our building stone that we use when we go out there and make the connections with the other businesses in town. Um, you know, maybe just lunch or breakfast meetings, just quick meetings, so we're not taking up a lot of their time. But we get the message apart out to them and tell them how we can also advertise their business as we're doing this 24-hour event and make it um, beneficial to them as well. Uh, I didn't go bullet by bullet because I figured you could read that. <laughs> if you've got questions, I'm, I'm happy to ask, answer them. So what unique events are you looking at? Oh, it's a secret. <laughs> This year, we're going to try to have some um, fun uh, activities throughout the day. And one of which we're trying to put together is a, a tug of war contest over the creek between the fire department and the police department. And, you know, just fun little things within the community that you can get um, awareness and some excitement built and just keep that going throughout the day. You know, and, and just try to keep it simple. Um, think of things that We'll get the community involved and in supporting you and um, recognizing what you do in the community. Um, you know, it's not just a matter of handing out free food. You know, we provide education on um, healthy cooking for kids to adults. We also give education on um, finance management. So there's a lot of things that food banks do that most people don't necessarily acknowledge or understand understand behind the scenes. So that helps get your um, nonprofit message out there. Other question? Thank you, Elizabeth. And if you also, if you're writing down questions or if we don't get to a question, uh, the next session is actually small group breakouts, so you can ask away at that point in time. Um, a lot of the presenters are going to turn into facilitators for our small group discussions. So there will be a lot of time to ask questions. Um, next up is uh, Valerie Hooks with Dog Paw Off Leash Parks. So um, last year was Dog Paw's actual first year, um, and we kind of just jumped in at really like we said, hey, we should do this thing. And so um, we signed up and um, got going on it, and um, me and a team of two graphic designers, um, Dog Paw's an all-volunteer organization. So they hired us to come on board and um, help them establish of a marketing campaign we put together um, we were pretty aggressive um, leading up into it to build our Facebook um, especially our Facebook um, we, we tried to do social media across all platforms but we just kind of were like we can only do a few things here so Facebook was our kind of main focus and we really built up our um, audience there by um, including you know asking people to come and like our page who had been engaged um, we really put up quality, tried to put up quality um, engagement going into that so that we built our, um, our audience up. And then we created a um, social media campaign um, that was um, heavily, you know, dogs running in the parks and all that with a give more 
um, logos and really heavily branded um, so that that was, and we did what the last two people have been doing. Um, we really just had a, a kind of a drip campaign that came out um, through for the weeks leading into um, September. Um, whether that was through email, we built up our email um, list. And then we also, um, you know, as on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, we just, just really were aggressive putting that out there. Um, the other things that we did was we had actually had a, um, a food vendor um, that was willing to come and help us do an event in the parks. And because we're an all volunteer organization, we knew that we were going to have to do something in the parks because that's where our people are. And um, we probably were going to do something with food because people like to eat. And so um, we were um, we were trying to figure out how that would work based on what the weather was going to be because we didn't know and we wanted to, we needed to be flexible. So we had Rip City come in. They were actually willing to do um, food for us at their cost, and they donated all of the money to us, which was very we were very grateful for. For so we did. Um, that in the afternoon it was a beautiful day we learned early on um, in the morning we had a wee litter come out and do donuts in the park that was actually not um a thing apparently people don't like to eat donuts in the morning um at a dog park i don't know um so um so we learned that really quickly that that was not a, a thing that people wanted to do and um but they loved the ribs they sold out i think of the ribs in like an hour so, um, but we also put up um, our own stuff. We were educating people in the parks. We were talking to them. They were, we were building our membership. We we're also membership based. And so we had a lot of different things going on in the parks. And this year we're hoping to um, really kind of like build on that. We're hoping to bring in um, Rip City again. We're hoping to do maybe a vendor fair or something like that in the parks. Um, something that's flexible in case it rains, but um, but is also can be fun. And um, we're also looking for matching gifts. So we already have a few matching gifts. We're just trying to um, find a few donors that are willing to like pull their money together and help us kind of um, kind of double what we like. We have a big goal. We like to double what we got last year. So and we're also looking to um, kind of look at those prizes and figure and have people ready to go on social media to help share as well as um, have people ready to give at certain times during the day for the prizes. So that's, I think I've covered everything. Any questions? Great, and uh, Valerie mentioned something uh, important is the prizes. Uh, a lot of people like to strategize around those. Sorry, probably didn't hear that uh, too well. Uh, anyways, people like to strategize around the prizes. And uh, basically, we, we are still working on getting price sponsorships. And then we, once we have what we think is going to be the final you know, number, then we start to figure out the price structure. Um, so I think that's supposed to be finished by July 31st. Um, so August you know, early August, you can start to look for um, our prize structure. So the next seven nonprofits is in the medium size, or at least was in the medium size category last year. Um, the organizations who are going to be presenting are Legacy Salmon Creek Hospital, uh, Lower Columbia School Gardens. Are you here? I think I might have to present for them. Um, and then Open House Ministries. Uh, we'll wrap it up. Um, but to start things off, I'll um, bring Katie Swing. How do you pronounce it? Swingle, Swingle up to the stage. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm Katie, and I work for the Legacy Salmon Creek Hospital Foundation. Um, so one thing that has worked well for us, um, as everyone is saying, is social media campaign. And I think uh, when I first, so I've been working on, I've been managing a campaign since the beginning, um, and. I was a little bit nervous about posting too much or people are going to be annoyed or what if they're sick of this before it even happens and what i learned is that is not a thing so i don't know if no one is here i don't want to get mad at me for saying post all you want um obviously have content and have some sort of strategy um but with the algorithms on facebook 
not everyone's going to see everything that you post. Um, so, you know, if you log on right now and log on in 30 seconds, you're going to see a totally different feed. Um, so keep that in mind, share different content stories. What we did is had, we had a 24 day countdown. So 24 days out, we really hit Facebook hard, posting in the morning and the afternoon and the evening to try and get different demographics of people. You know, people look at Facebook when they, when they wake up, when they're on their lunch break, and then before they go to bed. Um, so thinking about viewership and then what kind of stories you can tell to those specific groups. Um, and then just disclaimer, before October, I was working on this campaign for the Boys and Girls Club in Southwest Washington. So something that really helped us was targeting audiences. So um, when we first, when this opportunity came to us, I feel like I say this all the time, but we used it as a fundraiser versus a fundraiser. So what we wanted to do was get as many people on our site um, versus dollars raised. Um, so instead of reaching out to our big heavy hitter donors, we wanted to get new people in the door um, giving at a lower level. So we um, targeted three different audience groups, one being our own staff. Um, we have a part-time staff of about 60. Shelly, I'm looking at you because she's representing Boys and Girls Clubs now. Um, 60 people, mostly college students um, who have their own networks that we don't normally reach. So their classmates, their friends, their neighbors. And we challenged all of our staff members to get 10 friends, family, colleagues, classmates to donate just $10. Um, and then we created a little competition. Somebody already mentioned competition always works. So uh, getting a little bit of fire behind everyone. Um, and then our second target audience was our volunteer group. So we have hundreds of volunteers at our sites every day. Um, so getting them involved as well, that's a group that we've never had reached out to before. Um, and created a fun message, you know, you already give so much of your time, here's a day that you can give a little bit more. Um, and then our third group, which we had never ever reached out to, was our own club family. So our kids who attend our programs, their families, their parents, um, and we had some clever messaging for them, you know, we're here for you every day, here's one day that you could be here for us. And that actually was much more successful than we had thought. So we set up giving stations at our club sites and just talked to parents. Um, and again, keeping it at the lower $10 level was what really helped us. Um, and the targeting audience was great because we had, I think the first year we did this, 75% uh, of our donors were brand new. So they had never been to an event and they had never given to us before. So thinking about networks and groups that you don't normally reach out to is super helpful. And then the, the $10 thing, again, was our target. And we had one year, 80% of our gifts were $50 or less. So it really just brings home the point of every little bit helps. Um, you don't need to give $500 or $1,000. That $10 mark really, really adds up. Um, and then one thing that we have learned um, at Salmon Creek is that I'm sure like with a lot of you, your board and your major donors, they give to a lot of organizations, which is great. Um, so we had kind of counted on them to do a lot of the legwork for us, but then we found out that they're giving to everyone else. Um, so we had to get a little bit creative in how we reach out to people. And one thing that works for us was finding like one champion who really believed in our cause and our mission. Um, all of our funds go to cancer services. So we found somebody who had been affected by our program. Um, and then he was able to go out and get his networks who then got their networks to bring in more people. So finding your advocates and your champions to kind of get out there and spread the word beyond social media is also super helpful. Um, and then this year we are trying, we, so the hospital foundation is small, but the hospital itself is very big. And we have the unique opportunity of, we have staff on our site 24 hours a day. Um, and we haven't really found a way to engage those folks yet. So we're working on a strategy to get all of our staff involved and excited and keep the momentum going all the way through all 24 hours, which I don't have a specific plan to talk about right now. It might be a really long day for me, I'm not sure. Um, but that's the way we're trying to just get more people involved that aren't normally our donor population, um, but people who just care about our mission and the work that we're doing. Any questions? Right. No questions? Okay. I'm actually the one who's going to all right, thank you, Katie. Um, so next is Shannon Cahoon from Lower Columbia School Gardens. Sorry, I was zoning out a while ago. I was checking out everyone's uh, profile pages on the board on the website. So it's fine already. Um, I'm the board president of Lower Columbia School Gardens. This will be our fourth year participating in Give More 24. 
Um, and it's one of our most fun things, um, like some other people have said, it's a way that we can really target our families and those involved in our programs because the minimum gift of $10, I think okay, I might be making this up, but this year it's $5. Um, really allows the people that we serve to get engaged where a lot of times they don't feel like they're able to contribute something meaningful, you know, meaningful um, to our organization. But if we can tell them, hey, every $5 really does help make a difference, then that helps, um, helps them to feel empowered and connected as well. One thing that's been really successful for us, uh, just to reiterate, is planning ahead with our communication plan, knowing what um, prizes we're going to target and really identifying kind of our um, our champions for Give More 24. So we have a, a nine person board and we have a small fundraising committee that involves some other people too. So and then some of our standout volunteers and other people as well. So kind of picking a group, maybe it's 20 people and really making sure that they know what our plan is and that they're really well aware and really activated um, and they're reaching out to their network. So I, you know, Kind of like those concentric circles when you drop stones in a pond, right? Um, so really focusing on preparing those people very well to reach out to their networks. Um, again, every year we've targeted a prize goal, um, which we're excited to see what those are this year. And so we can pick pick a prize goal or two this year. We have been able, we've been fortunate to win um, one of the thousand dollar prizes each of the three years we've participated. Um, Complex event and campaign elements. Sometimes we have tried things and they haven't been successful. So we've um, we've had two events at the same time, one at a winery and one at a little brewery in Longview. Um, and it just it was like a mixed message and no one knew, knew where to go. And then the big party always ended up being at one or the other locations. So this year, as an example of what we've learned, is we're going to consolidate that. Just go to one location. Something else that we learned is that we were there and our you know, 20 or so champions were there and then we kind of forgot to tell other people like really specifically and ahead of time about that. So this year that's part of our focus is the top three ways to support us on Give More 24 is donate, share, share this message, invite your friends, badger your coworkers, and then celebrate with us. So please come and join us at our party, um, which is also a really great time that we run around and beg people just to like, oh, it only takes a minute, can you donate here? So hopefully they're there with us. If they're not there with us that day, then they're gonna be there with us whether they like it or not. Um, something else is don't underestimate the power of just email too. So we you know, really get focused on Facebook and that is incredibly important for this day, but reaching out a little bit ahead of time with an email again from all of those champions we kind of structure it for them and then encourage them to personalize it. Just telling their network, hey, get ready. This is a thing that's happening. Yes, I actually believe in and support this organization. Um, and then the day of, they can kind of reach out again and just make those personal connections again. Uh, I feel like, I feel like that might be all that I had. Does any, yes. Here, for the online audience. Your campaign really stands out in my mind and I'm not really that familiar. It was something about your Facebook, how fun and much energy, and you didn't address that in your top four. So I'm just curious the secret, because I was like, felt like giving and I didn't really even know who you were. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> Welcome back this year. Um, so one thing that we do with our social media is we always come up with sort of a graphic theme and that might be one reason why it's standing out. So you know, here shortly when we start post talking about the day and then the whole day of as we post and post and post is we always have a graphic theme. So last year, I think um, the pictures just have, and they're usually of like our produce and our kids and our rabbits and things like that, but just like black and white pictures with the really strong Give 424, we use the toolkit with the little flowers and let those kind of um, things. The year before, it was kind of, we took an image and we sort of distorted it into an avocado or an artichoke or something interesting. So you can go back, um, our Facebook page is, you can find us by searching for Steve the Rabbit or probably Lower Columbia School Gardens. Steve was our original mascot. And you can kind of scroll back through, but see what I'm talking about when it comes to those visual graphic um, themes. So that might be why, yes. Uh, I don't know whether you did it for the Give More 24 campaign or not, but I've been a don donor 
and uh, received a thank you postcard that had that one of the children had made a comment on and signed her name. And I thought that was really effective. Thank you, and thank you um, for supporting our organization as well. We actually send out every month, if you have been a donor during the month of July, and then in August, you're gonna get a postcard. And they're different every month, and they're kid art every month, which makes it super fun. Um, with a little, you know, my favorite thing about gardens is the carrots or the rabbits or whatever. Um, and so that's just a personal touch that our organization likes to do. But we do send out a thank you card to every donor following Get More 24 as well, especially if, you know, if they actually gave us their address or at least just an email um, to them. But yeah, so we, we try to really do our mission with kids, so we try to keep that front and center. Okay. Thank, you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. So moving along, we have uh, Judy McMurray from Open House Ministries. Thanks, Maureen. Um, first of all, I really want to congratulate the Community Foundation for this amazing program because we all benefit from it together. And I congratulate you. I'm really grateful for every one of you because the, soul, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. We are getting so much visibility every single year that we do this. So congratulations to all of you in the room, all of us in the room, we get it, right? There's a huge opportunity and thank you to the Community Foundation because it gets better every year. Open House Ministries is a family homeless shelter. We're a Christian family homeless shelter in downtown Vancouver. If you haven't heard of us, on the east is um, the county courthouse. Far on the west is Share House. That's a different ministry. Um, and we are right in the middle between, uh, we have a whole city block between Ingalls and Jefferson, 12th and 13th. So that's where we are. So Open House Ministries, we take care of family homeless. And um, we've, this is our fourth year. We've learned a couple of things. And the very first thing that came to mind for us four years ago was that Get More 24 is it's a silver bullet. It's not going to fix the problems that you already have in your marketing campaign or your communications campaign. In fact, what it, it, what it made very clear for us were those things that we had to work on all year long. So what it is, is a marvelous opportunity to incorporate something really great, wonderful, with a lot of publicity into your overall marketing and de fund development strategy throughout the year. So Get More 24 for us doesn't begin in July, it begins in January when we're thinking in terms of what are we going to do now that's going to set us up for Give More 24. Because think about it, this is the perfect time of year. People are back from vacation, yet, right? Kids are back in school, people are back in their businesses. It's a perfect warm up to the fall with all of the donors that you currently have, plus the opportunity to meet more people. Um, we learned that um, if it's part of that overall development strategy, it's going to be really great. But there is a little bit of a challenge. Now, we have an older constituent base with Open House Ministries. We've been around for 30 years. And so a lot of our supporters don't even have email, believe it or not. And so, yeah. <laughs> so we found that we have to talk with them, but once more, we have a twofold challenge. And this is a thing that I think is important for us as nonprofits to grasp. With Give More 24, sometimes you have to educate the donor about what Give More 24 is because they haven't, people don't have a clue. So you always try to make it easier for your donor to give to you, right? And the second piece then is to convince the person that is seeing that message in five seconds that not only do they want to pay attention to Give More 24, but that Open House Ministries is really a good place for them to do their philanthropy this year. So that's, that's an important lesson that we learned. Apart from that, then you go back to, just like what every, all of our presenters earlier were saying today, um, I, mean, I think I've attended every single one of these, and I always come away with really great information. And just like Temple said this morning, it's about a basic marketing strategy. So from there, um, you got to keep it simple. You know, the keep it simple, stupider. That was for me. <laughs> keep it simple, sister, is, is true. Because the very first time that I was at, um, Nolan was here as a presenter, and he said, okay, write down what your strategy is going to be for this year. And I went, Oh, well, we want to eradicate homelessness in Southwest Washington. <laughs> and when he came over, he went, uh, you might want to kind of narrow that down a little bit for this particular campaign, because this is a campaign. It's an appeal, right? So you got to think of a real clear strategy. So that year, we had a jump strategy because we wanted to purchase clothes for our kids. 
in our shelter. 50 to 60 percent of the of people in our shelter are every night are kids over the age of 17, homeless kids. So we wanted to purchase jeans, underwear, other unmentionables, pants, and shoes for that for, for the school. So that was that was our theme for that year. Um, but you want to have you want to identify who do you want to talk to. What do you want to say to them, and how are you going to get that message to them? So that's your audience, your, our message, and then the channels of distribution. And the channels that we chose were actually very simple. We're very organic. That's an expression we have out around the shelter. There are times when I mean, you, you take a look at us and go, "Wow, <laughs> this is pretty basic stuff," you know. Uh, not a whole lot of bells and whistles. We're dealing with human services on a very, very personal level. And um, so in that organic environment, we wanted to incorporate some of our kids and, um, and, and the families and get them involved in the whole process. But we actually do direct mail. We go to those things that we know work for our constituent base, our direct mail, our newsletter, Facebook, um, email, and still keep it kind of simple. We're really, really, really excited this year about using peer-to-peer because this is a great year for us to leverage that and get into that and um, expand upon what we already have established with um, the com campaigns in the past or the people that have we have supporting us right now. Um, we are going to have an event and we'll look, take a, uh, I can't share what that is right at the moment, but it will be on our Facebook page and it incorporates our community partners because after all these years, we have a tremendous amount of community partnerships set up for our programs. And so that'll be part of what's to come. Do you have any questions? All right, thank you, Maureen. Okay, so on to our large uh, nonprofit category. <laughs> um, left my paper over here, hold on. Yeah, so in the next category, we have uh, Habitat for Humanity, well, Evergreen Habitat for Humanity, to be specific, Clark County Food Bank, and uh, Friends of the Children. So uh, kicking it off is Heather Cochran from Habitat for Humanity. Thank you. So um, my name is Heather. I work at Evergreen Habitat for Humanity. I have been there for five years. So this is my and Habitat's fifth year participating in Give for 24. Um, when we first started, we raised $1,500 on our first day, not knowing what to expect. We were really excited about that. Um, and every year we've raised more and more um, until last year we raised 20,000. Um, so it was a really big year for us. Um, some lessons that we've kind of learned through the past four years and then kind of what we're going to do to help uh, increase what we're getting this year. Um, so like some of the other people have said, our biggest thing was finding a match. Um, so we worked with the Community Foundation last year to secure a match. Um, we had $10,000. Um, this year we're doing the same. Um, and we're also coming, going to um, our specific donors who we know already give, you know, 5000 a year or 1000 or whatever, and asking them um, to be a part of this specific event. Um, so that's what we're going to do this year to secure that funding as well. Um, <laughs> we also learned about really specific stories and messages. Um, so when we first started, we were kind of just shouting into the void of social media, um, you know, help us build homes and um, a part, as a part of Give More 24. And <laughs> we didn't really have a lot of success with that because that's like really not very specific and it's not very exciting. Um, so we learned that we really need to share specific stories. So find what is happening on our construction site. Last year, it was that we needed to raise, you know, four walls on a home for this specific family. So we were sharing that family story. We were sharing that we needed to buy the lumber. We needed to get those walls raised um, for this family. So having that really specific thing um, helped us a lot. A few years ago, we created um, some granting guidelines to help us and how we talk about Habitat, um, you know, in person and across all platforms. Um, so we utilized that brand that branding guideline that we created to help us um, create those messages for the day and leading up to the day. Um, we, <laughs> at Habitat, we have our biggest annual fundraiser in September as well. Um, so that creates quite a challenge in messaging. 
um, and priorities. And so we have to be really strategic about that. Um, what we're talking about when we're talking about it, um, we want everybody to come to our breakfast. Like that's the number one thing. Um, so finding that balance of how we're talking about coming to our event and also participating in Give More 24. Um, I don't think we've perfected that, but we've gotten lucky this year. Our breakfast is at the beginning of September. So we now have two weeks um, in between. It's usually like the same day or like the day before or the day after. <laughs> so it's been a lot of like, yeah, Give More 24 is important, but like this is our most important thing um, is our breakfast. So it's been a struggle finding that. Um, and I think we're going to learn these lessons constantly to find the best way to, to navigate those messages. Um, and then events. Um, our very first year, so the most important thing is don't just do an event. Um, everybody's talking about cool events and you're like, oh crap, like I need to have a cool event too. And I was like, I that. um, that's a really bad idea. We did that our first year and um, we kind of just threw it together a week of, um, it was a sign instead event. And so we had this trust displayed at our Habitat store and folks could come and donate and sign the, the, um, the trust that was gonna be used in one of our Habitat homes. Um, which is like, we were like, that's so cool and like fun, um, but it wasn't. And so <laughs> like we had like all of our staff names on it and I'm like one person who happened to be shopping in the store that day who also thought it was cool. Um, and so don't do it to do it. Um, so that was the our big decision. And this year, because we have that as people we point out, uh, we are going to actually do an event. So we've been planning um, our events this year is called Build More 24. Um, unfortunately, we will not be building for 24 hours. We've tried that, and um, permits and logistics are insane. Um, so we're going to be building on our construction site from 9 to 3, and we're inviting folks to come. Typically, the long term of us, it's an eight hour commitment. We have to work from eight to four. So, this is an opportunity for folks to come for five and, um, you know, if you're ready to fight or hit the wall or whatever it is that you have going on that day, um, come five minutes, hang one piece of society. Um, if you seriously don't, you can also write a blessing that will be uh, attached to the inside of the home. So, it'll be before she bunk has gone up. Um, so we both like to write encouraging messages to the families who are living in those homes. Um, so that will be like a motivator, hopefully, for people to donate. So I know that's going to work. Um, and then we also have just finished two homes. It's all happening on our big subdivision. So we'll have two homes that people will be building on, and two have just finished. So we'll also be doing site tours all day of two completed habitat homes. Um, and then we are going to do like a happy hour. Um, at one of our homes as well. So um, maybe we're taking on too much this year um, in those two weeks that we have to really do it. Um, so maybe we'll be learning more lessons this year. We'll let you know next year what that looks like. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it if folks have any questions. Great. Thank you. Okay, next up is Matt Edmonds from Clark County Food Bank. Thank you. So at, the, at Clark County Food Bank, um, of course we recognize that the social media blasts that take place um, have, have been vitally important. But in addition to that, we also want to get just face to face with individuals and donors. So for us, that means that we have tried to leverage as many different partnerships and relationships and friendships that we, that we can um, over, the, over the past several years since Give More 24 started. So uh, the three of the questions that we ask are, um, so what businesses already support our efforts? So, um, so those are those partnerships uh, that, that are already supporting the food bank. And so we ask that, that question, so how can we leverage those? The second one is, so what places do we frequent? So just individual staff um, at the food bank. Um, so what's the place you'll get your coffee in the morning? What's the place that you buy the, your bagel in the morning? What, where do you go to lunch? Where do you have a beer after work? So what are those places? And can we leverage some of those, some of those relationships? And then the last one is, um, of course, where do our friends work? And so our friends, like just our 
friends, actual friends, are, are people who we, um, who we interact with our neighbors, board members. So how do we leverage those relationships? So here's the way that looked. Uh, one year we, uh, we said with uh, Rude Awakenings, um, a place that we frequent because it's about two blocks from our facility, we said, um, can we set up a table here and if we, um, if someone makes a donation, uh, are you willing to make a coffee do donation to them? And they said, absolutely, we'd love to do that. So if you went, if you walked into Brood Awakenings and you made, made a donation of any amount during Give More 24 at our little table, then you got a free drip coffee. And so then, um, so that was one of those uh, relationships and, and a unique connection that we could then advertise. Um, and then also Brood Awakenings could advertise that as well. Um, one of our uh, uh, businesses, local businesses that support us is what we call a Hunger Alliance Partner. That's New Seasons Market. And so we said, New Seasons, can we show up? Can we have a table there? And if we said, um, if someone makes a, uh, a, a $20 donation, would you give them a $5 like coupon for free groceries? So there you're, you're giving funds to help people, to, you're giving food away, and you're getting groceries in return. And so then we could, we could shoot that out as a social media blast. Um, we had a similar partnership with Whole Foods. Um, with some of our relationships and some of our friends, we have a number of, um, we, when we we're talking as a staff, we said there's a number of bankers uh, in our community who support the food bank. So maybe we could put together a little friendly, like bank against bank competition. So we reached out to a lot of our, um, a lot of our banking friends and we said, when you make a donation, and if you make a donation to Clark County Food Bank or a gift form, then, um, then in the notes section of your donation, mention that which bank you're a part of, and whichever bank um, raises the most amount of money, we will host a party for you. We would either bring you lunch and, and feed your staff there at your bank, or we'll host a party for you at the food bank. And so the, the cool thing was, um, uh, at the end of Give More 24, um, we identified the bank that won, and then um, and they said, no, we want, we want the party at the food bank. So now we get to invite those donors to the food bank to, um, to, uh, to have this kind of food bank after hours party and celebration um, where we get to thank them. And again, it's just one-on-one -on -one connections with, uh, with some of these donors. So we did that with, with some of our banking friends. We did that with some of our law firm friends where we, where we said, all right, so how about attorneys and people who work for some of the law, law firms? We'll do a law firm versus law firm. So we sent out that same blast and identified which law firm supported Clark County Food Bank um, it, it, uh, in the most significant way, and then um, offered a food bank after hours celebration for them as well. Uh, I'll tell you one, one more, last one. Uh, we said, uh, look, as a food bank, we travel around to, to many different grocery stores. At the time, it was 24 different grocery stores. Um, we pick up food every single morning from those grocery stores. And so where the math just kind of worked out, where we said, we visit 24 grocery stores, let's go and um, for 24 hours, um, let's visit a different grocery store every day and highlight that partnership and say these local grocery stores are donating food to Clark County Food Bank. And if we did, um, if we shot a video and, and like a live video and published that video, one video every hour on the hour, then, um, then we could say while these grocery stores are donating food, we're encouraging you community members in this neighborhood to donate funds. And so that was a campaign that we did, um, 24 hour, tw 24 videos in 24 hours. I don't recommend that, um, <laughs> but nonetheless, it was a lot of fun to engage and, and do that. So that, that's what I mean when we say we, um, we look to leverage those existing partnerships, relationships, and friendships, um, and that's what we're looking, um, looking ahead to do this next year. Uh, the one fatal mistake I would say is thinking that if you do nothing and you just hope that something's gonna happen, um, you're probably gonna be disappointed because um, if you just say, well, I, I Created the, I created my page on the Give More 24, and now the dollars are just gonna roll in. Um, and again, that's what these trainings are all about, aren't they? About having a plan and putting a plan in place and saying, okay, so how do we move that plan forward to do something so that we can receive something in return? So that's a little snapshot into the food bank there. Questions? Insights, and I have to apologize. Matt was going to show you an awesome video of the supermarket uh, traveling exhibit that he did, um, and it didn't work. The audio doesn't work, so we're going to have to skip that. But um, yeah, that took a lot of a lot of energy. So kudos to you for that. Uh, next up is Justine. Oh. No, we're not. Justine Reimann, a marketing and online fundraising strategist at Friends of the Children. 
big announcement. We can actually, as of very recently, say Friends of the Children in Southwest Washington, after serving, friend, uh, serving youth in the community for 12 years, we now have a site and actually dedicated Southwest Washington staff. So we're very proud of um, So we're kind of in a weird category. We are large, um, but we, our footprint in this community is small. And so we had to be pretty creative um, over the last four years of how we can leverage really the, the, the little bit that we had. Um, and so we've talked this whole day about online marketing. And now I'm going to talk to you about not that, not that at all, even though it's like in my job title. Um, and uh, one thing that uh, we're actually really working at um, with our organization embracing is something called omni-channel marketing. It's a new buzzword. It replaces multi-channel marketing. Um, and really what that is is a step further towards full integration of what you're doing online and offline uh, with your communications and engagement. Both are equally important. So uh, we really should focus on providing a seamless experience to our donors and supporters where they can engage with us face-to-face, -face, on our website, through social media, in our emails, phone calls, and keep their experience consistent and complementary so they can move through all those channels and have the same experience regardless of, uh, of which avenue that is. Um, so for example, last year we did schedule a series of posts and emails ahead of time that created a sort of conversation throughout the day. Um, so it wasn't the same message, but slightly different narrative each time that reflected not just what was happening online, but also uh, what was happening at um, our event. Which leads me to the next thing. Uh, like other people have mentioned, do we do an event? Maybe? <laughs> and that's kind of where we were. Um, and so actually, um, we, uh, you know, we didn't have the capacity for it. Um, so for the last two years, we actually gave the Community Foundation a little bit of a headache and <laughs> uh, partnered with a number of other social service organizations to do a Give More 24 event. Um, and some of them are in the room here today. We got uh, Friends of the Carpenter, Bridge the Gap, and then also Giving Closet did it the first year. So, um, and, uh, with that, the focus wasn't necessarily on driving donations. I think a couple of other people have said that, um, but really providing a way to get our messaging out there, um, a way to have fun and uh, cultivate and build relationships that could potentially turn into donors for the next year. Um, also just logistically, uh, the benefit of it is that uh, we're getting our messaging in front of our partner uh, networks um, and vice versa, and also leveraging um, our staff capacity. Um, so I know a lot of you guys are like, well, I'm a one, one person uh, you know, shop. And it's like, yeah, they are too. Well, let's work together. And now we're leveraging each other. Um, Meanwhile, we have built our capacity over the last four years of participating. I will say the first two years, we really struggled. Each year, we received less than $100 in donations. The third year, we received, I think, almost $5,000. Um, last year, uh, we raised over $27,000. Um, and really, that was, it was a buildup, as you can see. Um, having a match was definitely huge. Um, other people have talked about that. Um, but underneath that is really four years of building on what we did the year before. Um, it's saying, that was really great. Let's do that again and more. Um, and so uh, for the first year, we really just used the assets the Community Foundation uh, provided us. Um, did some social media posts and emails, 
The next year we incorporated our branding. Um, and then last year we built a specific campaign with our own messaging. Um, so you aren't creating something new every year, but trying to utilize what you did the year before and, and just uh, and build on it. Um, this year we have started even earlier and we've already started um, campaigning really. Uh, and it's about uh, finding our champions in the community. Um, again, that brings me back to the on the channel marketing that uh, what's especially important when it comes to, I think, cultivating the gift more 24 donors is that there's a lot of competition. We've heard that we've got our, our events, we've got up on the horizon, um, giving Tuesday, and we don't want to take those donors away from there, but find the people who donated, identify them that they want to be a give more 24 donor. And you actually start a conversation with them way ahead of time and say, will you enjoy participating in Give More 24? How do you want to participate this year? That makes them feel pretty special. They're like, oh yeah, I can support. What do you want me to do? Um, I, potentially. Uh, so uh, we actually this year will be uh, doing an open house at our new site that is actually hosted by uh, one of our community supporters. Um, Lastly, whether it's offline or online channels, it's better to do a few things really well than spread yourself thin between a lot of things. If video is not your strength, don't do video. <laughs> don't worry about it. Um, but if one-on-one -on -one conversation is your strength, have those and have a lot of them. Um, and then build on it for next year. So, any questions? No, we're out of time. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, that wraps up the um, organizations. And this is actually, this session came out of feedback from last year. You all said, we want to connect more with other nonprofits and learn from those who participated before. So that kind of drove the idea of this session. And this was part one. The next part is a small group breakout um, that's going to happen. We're going to take a quick 10 minute break. But before we do, I'd like to uh, direct your attention to two things on the table. One is uh, this building a successful giving day campaign worksheet. Um, so I think some of you got this in email yesterday. And uh, what it is, is it's a worksheet that kind of helps you start thinking about some of the uh, core parts of a you know, giving day campaign. And if you look at this during the 10 minute break, it might spark some questions for your small group discussion. So think about what am I, you know, what don't I understand? What am I having trouble thinking about how I'm going to do? Um, and bring those to your small groups. Uh, the other piece is a Give More 24 sticker or decal. You'll see that. Uh, grab the one nearest to you. And on the back of it is a number. Remember that number because that is your small group. You don't get to choose between the two. I see you. But yeah, just uh, remember the number, and when we come back from break, uh, there will be table numbers, and just uh, make your way to your table. Um, with that, I'll let you guys uh, free for a little bit so you can uh, you know, use the restroom or get more coffee, and we'll keep this going.